All right, guys, welcome to your lesson on factoring tricky trinomials. So these are different than simple trinomials. Simple trinomials, remember, we had the trinomial, so three terms, your x squared, your x, your constant. Um, but the number in front of the x was a 1, and that's what made it simple. So what we're going to look at today are tricky trinomials, where the number in front of the x is something other than 1. Also, of course, it can't be 0, but it can never be 0. Otherwise, it would be linear, not quadratic, OK? So if it's something other than 1, tricky trinomial. Now, we did see a couple um, on the last video. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here's the ones from the last video. Uh, so this one here, 3x squared minus 18x plus 27. This, looking at it, is not a simple trinomial either. But because we were able to common factor out that number in front of our x squared, and then we ended with a simple trinomial in the bracket, that ended up being a nice, simple, easy factor as well. But if that number in front can't be factored out, we now have our tricky trinomial. So let's work through our first examples here. So when factoring tricky tri trinomials, we now need to look for two numbers that multiply to the number in front of your x squared and your constant. Um, they have to multiply to the product of that, and they have to add to the middle term. So these are going to be your M and M, same, same as what we did last time or I shouldn't say same, but similar to what we did last time. So for the first one, this is our tricky trinomial. So we have three terms, our x squared, our x are constant. The number in front is a 2. I'm unable to just common factor out the 2. So it's not going to be simple, no common factoring. We have to go for this tricky method. So what we need to do is take the first number and the last number and multiply them together. That's negative 12. So what I need is two numbers that multiply to negative 12. And just like with our simple, they have to add to that middle number. So we've got to figure out those numbers. So negative 12, we've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4 as our factors of 12. One has to be negative. The other will be positive. But they have to add to positive 1. So this is going to be the combo. So those two numbers are going to be negative 3 and 4. So to solve for this thing, what we're going to do is we're going to take this middle term. And instead of writing it as 1x, we are going to split the middle term using those two numbers that we found. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 3x plus, and the other number was 4, 4x minus 6. So really all we've done is we've taken that 1x and we've broken it up into two different terms but if we were to collect those like terms again, we would end up with that 1x. So you guys can see how these are the same thing. So this equation, we haven't actually changed anything. It is still the same. What we can do from there is factor by grouping, which you learned how to do on the common factoring day. So we're going to find the common factor between these two, which in this case happens to just be x. We're left with 2x and minus 3. Then we're going to factor the second set by grouping, taking out a positive 2, so I put plus 2, and that leaves me with 2x minus 3. Finally, we can factor out that common um, expression in the two of them. So pull out the 2x minus 3, and we've got the x plus 2 are our remnants, and they get put in the second bracket. And voila, we have our tricky trinomial factored. Okay, so it's a bit of a process, but what we're doing is splitting up that middle term, factor by grouping, and then common factor out that expression like we've already done before. Now, one question that sometimes gets asked is, does it matter which one goes first? Like, do I have to put the negative 3 first or the 4 first? Does it matter? And it does not matter, okay? You can put either one first. One little trick is if you put, if you have a negative and a positive like we have here, if you put the negative one first, you won't necessarily, or you won't have to um, necessarily common factor out a negative. But if you put that negative one second, you're definitely going to have to common factor out a negative. Um, sometimes we can't avoid it, but in this case we can. So that's a little trick you can do. Uh, but it's completely doable the other way as well. If you were to do the same question and actually flip them around and put them in in the other order, um, and I'll do that in a minute down below so you can see, you're going to get the same answer. The only difference is your x plus two will be first, and your two x minus three three will be second if you follow the same process we've been doing. So I'm just going to pause that, do that for you so to show you what it looks like. 
All right, so I've done that one for you, just flipping that negative 3 and the positive 4 around, putting the positive 4 first. So you'll see by having that negative term in there second, I have to factor out the negative 3, which can sometimes be tricky or we forget to do it correctly. Um, but then we end up getting that same term, pull the same term out, and the only difference you can see between the answer up here and this answer here is that they're flipped. One's written first, the other one's written second. All right, moving on, we've got two more examples to do. So example number two, so take a second here. What do M and N have to multiply to? And what do you think M and N have to add up to? So remember for the multiply, it's that first one times the last one. So they have to multiply to a positive 10, and then they add to the middle number, just like we did with tri uh, simple trinomials. So I need two numbers that multiply to 10, but add to positive 11. So 1 times 10, 2 times 5, which set adds to 11, and that's just this guy right here. So 1 and 10. So one of them has to go first for that middle term, and one of them has to go second. Doesn't matter which one, but you've got to put an x on them. So instead of 11x, I'm going to have 1x, and I'm going to have 10x. Of course, you can leave the 1 out if you want, it's implied. Then we're going to common factor the first two terms, so we're again factoring by grouping, so we pull out the x, and we're left with 2x plus 1, and then we pull out the 5 from the second two, and again we're left with 2x plus 1. Pull out that common expression, and put all the remnants in your last bracket. And there you go. For example 3 over here on the right, they must multiply to first one times the last one, which is positive 12, and they must add to negative 7. So two numbers that multiply to 12, well 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. They have to add to a negative number, and that little chart I showed you um, on the last video that is kind of that little cheat box to help you, that works here as well. So if we're multiplying to a positive, but it has to add to a negative, the only way that's going to happen is if both of our numbers are negative. Because a negative times a negative always results in a positive, but when we add, we're going to get a negative number. So our two numbers here are negative 3, negative 4. Now this one's unavoidable. You're going to have to factor out one of those negatives when we put it in here. So I'm going to put the negative 3x first, negative 4x second, doesn't matter which one goes first and second. Factor by grouping. So I can pull 3 and an x out of each term. That leaves me with 2x minus 1. And I have to pull out negative 2 from the second set. So dividing by negative 2 leaves me with positive 2 and then a negative 1. Alright, pull out that expression that's common. And then your leftovers. Now if you're ever doing a question like this and you notice that your sets of brackets here don't match when you're doing a tricky trinomial, that can mean one of a few things. Number one, you could have picked the incorrect pieces here, so the negative 3, negative 4 may not be the correct answer. Um, so for example, if I threw in a negative 2, negative 6, if I chose those two as my multiples to get to the 12, those don't add to negative 7. So if I had put them in here and I try to do this factoring by grouping, I'm not going to get the same numbers in these brackets. So that's one thing that you could have made an error on. The other one would be you could have made an error with factoring. So for example, a common thing is um, not pulling out the negative. So if you just pulled out a 2, you'd have negative 2 here and you'd have plus 1 here. Now they don't look the same. Um, or you could maybe not have pulled out the greatest common factor, but just a factor. Uh, so those are things to watch out for and potential errors that you could have made while working through this. Okay? But you should end up with those matching brackets when you're doing a tricky trinomial. All right, next page, guys, if you flip there, there are uh, six examples for you to try. I would like you to turn the video off or pause it at least for now um, and try all of them on your own. These are tricky to do. They take some practice, especially coming up with those special numbers, uh, but the only way to get there is by practicing it. So pause the video, go do those, and then you can come back and I'll pull all the solutions up here for you. Pause, 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 right now. watching you. Pause the video. All right, you have your box of Kleenex there, you cried through this activity, and now we're ready to take it up. So let's see how you did and how you made it through. 
okay? So multiplying, make sure you've got your right values here so that you come up with your correct numbers. So multiplying to negative 12, adding to negative 4, determining your two different values, popping them here in, replacing that middle term, so basically expanding out that expression a bit into two terms, and then grouping, common factoring, and that's it. Okay, so here we've got 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 1. For example number um, 5 here, 2x minus 1 and 4x plus 3. Example number 6 and 7, so you should have x minus 6 and 4x minus 3. And again, if you have them reversed, that's okay. Over here, 2x minus 3 and 3x plus 1. And check out your last two. 8 and 9, so we've got 5x minus 2 and x plus 3, 3x minus 4, and 3x plus 2. Alright guys, that's it for your video today. Hope you got it all done, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Time to do a passport!